Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared, and today we have a few things we're going to talk about. But first, I'm going to get to the title of the video when I say this doesn't mean your knife can cut. So first off, I want to get to that, and then I want to talk about a couple other knife-related things. When cutting paper, or when you see a reviewer, and I'm guilty of this too, so I'm calling myself out included, you know, when you hear a reviewer and you see him cut through some paper and he says, oh yeah, it'll cut. That's not, that doesn't mean that. That's not what that means. What that means is the edge is sharp. So when you pass a blade through a piece of paper, paper is fragile. So it requires a sharp edge to do it, not geometry. Geometry really doesn't play a big part in the cutting paper. I can take a knife that does not cut very well and cut paper just fine as long as the edge is sharp so you know what the, it's going to boil down to is how well it cuts is the geometry of the blade now we'll get into the geometry of the edge but the geometry of the blade is going to determine how well that knife passes through materials especially when we're talking about dense materials now if we're talking about say thin cardboard just regular cardboard nice and thin when you cut through it picture my hand the the seam of my two hands the blade is going through in between my two hands thin cardboard will split like this very easily so it doesn't require really good geometry to cut thin cardboard because of the way it splits now when you start getting the dense cardboard it doesn't split like this it literally stays together and will just go like this so what happens is there's a lot more pressure pushing into the blade and squeezing that blade as it's cutting through the cardboard so depending on how thick the spine is versus how thin the edge is and how fast or slow it drops down from the spine to the edge determines on how well it's going to cut through materials now the edge being sharp is going to be a little bit of a factor of course because it's actually you know the first part the you know the tip of the spear so to speak but once it, you know the biggest part's going to be is its initial bite into the material so how sharp the edge is is going to be where or how well it first starts the cut once the blade is into the material the geometry for the most part is going to take over yes the edge is going to have a, you know some factor it's going to play a part but the actual geometry is going to be the biggest determining factor of how well it passes through materials now edge geometry now that is the same thing basically except for what we're talking about is the actual edge. So this is the Microtech SOCOM Elite. This is a hard use knife, very thick blade. I mean, you can just look at, look at the difference here. Extremely thick. This thing is made for hard use. It's made for more abuse than cutting performance. So if you look at the edge on this knife, it's very small. It's got a small edge, right? So if I lay the edge back on this, my edge bevel will be bigger. So let's pretend this is a sharpening stone. This is a strop from Urban, Urban EDC Supply. Shout out to them. I will be showing this in a video soon and talking about the quality and everything. But let's pretend this is a stone right now. When I'm holding my angle and I'm sharpening, the higher I hold my, my blade or the spine, I should say, the higher I hold it when I'm going across my stone, the lower the angle. Now, or sorry, the higher the angle. Now, the more I lay it back like this, the lower the angle. So say this would be like 25 degrees. This would be like 15 degrees. Putting a 15 degree edge bevel on my knife will make the edge bevel bigger. Now, that will play a part in cutting, cutting performance and passing through dense materials. And in some cases, edge or, um, you know, edge performance and, you know, 
stuff like that. But right now we're just talking about how well it passes through materials. It's especially going to have a lot to do with how well it bites into the material as well. But so when you put the two together, the edge geometry coupled with the blade geometry, that determines how well something's going to pass through materials, especially dense materials. Now, like I said, when we're just talking about paper, anything could do that. Even something very thick, you know, even with a high angled edge. Now, having a low angled edge, yes, is going to cut cleaner through paper, but it will still cut. And you have to listen for that more than see it. So yeah, you can see it a little bit, but it requires really, uh, you know, a good eye for it. You know, somebody who's done it a lot to really understand how well it's cutting through paper. Now, I want to get into something else really quick. And, you know, I know I talk about it a lot and a lot of people love this subject. I, you know, had a lot of people come to me thanking me and really liking this subject. And then I've had a couple people that don't like it. They, they get on me and they say, oh man, you're the only one who ever complains about that. Yes, I'm talking about plunge grinds, but stick with me really quick because I really, you know, there, it goes deeper than just the way your knife looks or the way your edge looks. So now if I bring back my fake stone right now, and I pull up, say, the Kubi Carve, all right, the Kubi Carve. If I have a good plunge grind where it's not near the edge and I'm sharpening on my stone, I can go right past and get my whole edge really good. I don't have to worry about nothing hitting my stone. Now, something a lot of people don't realize is how expensive stones can be. Stones are extremely expensive, especially certain kinds. And I also want to say that I'm not the only reviewer that does talk about this. There are a lot of other reviewers that talk about it, especially reviewers that sharpen because they run into it and they understand this. Now, I don't really expect a reviewer that doesn't sharpen to really understand this as much. And that's why they might not talk about it as much because, you know, I mean, and I'm not talking crap or anything but it's hard to to understand if you know if you never sharpen the knife or if you're you know all your edges are are factory edges and when you have 50 knives or 100 knives it's easy to not ever have to worry about sharpening your knives you know you can get a lot more life out of your knives because you don't use them as often but for the for the buyer right? And that's who I try to review for. I'm reviewing the knife for the person that's going to buy it and use it as a tool. Even if they have 10 knives, they might only have one. It doesn't matter. I still want to bring the subject up because it benefits them in their purchase, especially if it's an expensive purchase. Now your $40 might be somebody else's $200. So even if it is a $40, $50 knife, I still want to bring it up because that might be a very expensive purchase to that person. Now, Going into the stone thing, what I'm talking about is that, say, uh, my Veneve stones, right? I have little chips on the corner, and they are like $180 a piece for the Dragon Series. And what that winds up coming from is plunge grinds. So what happens is, is when you're sharpening, you go to go up, and when it gets to right here, bang, the plunge grind hits the corner of the stone. Bang bang, bang, and it hits it. And it'll leave little chips on the corner. Now, my Veneve stones are extremely tough. So it's not as fragile as other stones that will that will happen very easily. Like, I mean, extremely easily. Like aluminum oxide, um, natural stones, Arkansas stones, you know, just it just depends. But it'll chip them. And when you chip that corner, now when I go to sharpen my knife, that little corner is going to rub on my edge and is going to scratch it. It's going to make it more difficult for me to sharpen a knife properly and have a really good edge. So what I'm going to have to do now is I'm going to have to work on my stone. I'm going to have to basically, basically file it down. You know, you take another stone and you condition it and you, you scrub it out, but it takes a lot of work. And depending on the stone, it takes a, a lot of work. So, you know, from a sharpening perspective, you don't want to hurt your expensive stones that are sometimes even more expensive than the knife you're sharpening, right? So now take the stone out of it, 
which is very important, I think, you know, the ease of sharpening of that knife, how well it's going to look in the future. Are you going to have to put in a plunge grind? Are you not? Is it going to have a big smile after the first time you sharpen it? How many sharpenings are you going to get out of it before it starts having a smile? How many sharpenings are you going to get out of it before you have to cut in your own choil? I think those are all important factors when buying, especially an expensive knife. But like I said, who's to say what's expensive to you, me, or the next guy, right? So even if it is a $40, $50 knife, I want to bring it up because that person might be making that purchase and might want to sharpen his own knife, make that knife last a long time. Or, you know, he might be a collector, but he just wants to make sure his edges are all nice and clean. He wants to make sure that that knife that he buys in the future or when when he does buy it, this is the Kaiser Dukes, but when he does buy it, he wants to make sure that he's not going to have to cut in a plunge grind later, or he's not going to have to worry about his edge looking ugly after the first time he sharpens it or a third time or whatever. And then you're going to have the guy who wants to sharpen it himself, right? This is the Kaiser Justice. The guy who's going to sharpen it himself. Well, he wants the best case scenario, all right? He doesn't want to get in. I ran into this. This is another reason why I talk about it because I was the guy. I was that guy who didn't understand that. I had my knives. I tried to freehand sharpen it. Next thing I know, I was very insecure about my sharpening because my edge looked like crap. Well, not really looked like crap, but back here towards the plunge grind, it looked like crap. And I'm sharpening a little short knife. So basically a knife that uh, isn't tall. Let me pull up the, the Civivi again, a very short knife and it was a saber grind. So the edge started like halfway up the blade. So the edge was only this bit or the, sorry, the bevel not the edge bevel, but uh, let me grab a saber grind really quick so I can like this. So picture it smaller, but a knife like this where the the taper starts right here. So this is how big the grind is. Now, when I started sharpening it, the corner right here went all the way up, whomp, all the way up, almost touching this up here. You know, ugly that looked to me. I felt like I just destroyed a $200 knife and it technically really wasn't my, I mean, it was my fault because I did it, but it was really my fault because I didn't understand plunge grinds and I didn't understand that that knife is going to do that. That's just the way that knife is. So now I can fix it, put a choil in it, but it's nice to know for next time that that's something I'm going to run into. So, you know, I just, you know, like I said, I had some people, uh, you know, complaining about me talking about plunge grinds and how I'm the only person who talks about it, blah, 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 which is not true. Like I said, there are other guys that do talk about it, especially the ones that understand it. But that's my job. My job is to make you understand the knife that you're purchasing. This is the Concept Excipiter. Great knife. But my, all right, my camera stopped. But my job is to show you how that knife is going to age over time and the difficulties you're going to run into with it, you know, regardless of how expensive it is. And, you know, if it's not a big deal to you, maybe it won't be. But <laughs> it might just be. I know it's been a huge problem for me. So a big deal to me. When I pull out 20 of my knives and Eight of them have a big old smile right here and just look horrible. That, you know, it makes me feel bad about my collection and it affects the price of which you're going to be able to get your knife for if you want to sell in the secondary. Try selling a knife that's been sharpened that has a big old smile right there that just looks destroyed by the plunge grind. Sell that thing. See how much money you get for it because you're not going to get nowhere near. The money you would get for a knife that also was sharpened but had a nice clean edge it's not going to happen so you know i think it's a very important thing to talk about and you know keep talking about until they start fixing it and understanding the problems of which we have when we try to sharpen the tools that they're selling us this is the artisan arion is it going to affect the way it cuts no but it is going to affect the way it sharpens, the way it looks, the way it sells on the secondary, the your stones, um, you know, 
And yeah, and the age of it, the way it looks, you know, whether it looks old and beat up or it looks nice and new, you know. So anyways, next subject. Now, this is about just knives in general. Um, I, I know this video has been long, but budget knives. Budget knives, man. Budget knives are killing it these days. Let me get this one out of here because that ain't a budget knife. The budget knives these days are killing it. They're doing a killer job. They are doing an amazing job. But we, you know, we still, I think we're holding some knives to a standard of which they're not sometimes. But man, are we getting great deals for some of these knives. It's amazing the what we are getting so i do not want to make it seem like i'm complaining especially when we're talking about a knife that is built so well for 30 40 bucks you know 50 bucks 60 bucks whatever i'm just you know i i, I love where we're at in this time of getting knives you know when we do get up to the very expensive knives you know you do expect more out of them but man, we are in a good time for budget knives because some of the budget knives we have today would be the high-end knives of yesterday, if you know what I mean. So we're watching S35VN become a budget steal. You know, I never, th I, I knew I'd eventually see that, but you know, that's what's happening. We're literally watching that. Next year, S35VN is going to be a budget steal. It's just the way it's going to be. So it, in it is going to be up to the the knife companies to fulfill the standards of which impress us because if you're doing less quality than other companies that we can get all the things we're asking for from one knife or one company then most people aren't going to buy from that company that can't stand next to another company or that doesn't at least compete with them and most of these companies are very competitive and they do a great job but it is going to be up to them whether or not they're competing with the companies that are taking it seriously because there's a lot of them they're taking it so seriously they are making some of the best knives on the planet in my opinion and especially for the money all right guys i'm gonna leave it at that i love you guys thank you guys for watching peace